This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! card review slash discussion type video, and this is going to be on another one of the new Link monsters that was spoiled for release over in Japan in the Link Vrains pack, the pack that is giving support to a bunch of older archetypes and older themes that are not anime-inspired, they're more of just, you know, the old, previously, you know, general archetypes that we've gotten in the past in the Yu-Gi-Oh! history of this game, and they're giving Link monsters as support to those decks. Now, the one I'm going to be talking to you about today is definitely not the best one out of the batch of cards that was released, but it is my own personal favorite for what should be some obvious reasons if you've watched this channel for any specific length of time. But the one that we're going to be talking about today is Hieratic Seal of the Celestial Spheres, the legacy support for Hieratics that funnily enough does not really work that well in terms of how it you know, functions on the Hieratic theme. Very interesting. There's, there's a lot of Hieratic cards that actually just don't mesh well with the deck in terms of what its actual, you know, best purpose is suited for, but... We'll get into that in a little bit. But anyway, Hieratic Seal of the Celestial Spheres. It is a light dragon link effect monster, and it's got two markers being a link to, and those links point bottom left and bottom right. And it's got zero attack, and its materials are just two dragon type monsters. So very generic. Any dragon type deck will be able to utilize this card to some capacity, especially when we start looking at its effects. Its effects are also very generically good for Hieratics, as well as just dragon support in general, which is kind of dangerous, actually. Konami has, you know, had a lot of, you know, problems in the past of giving, you know, just generic good dragon support, because it is one of the most supported themes in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, period, with the largest amount of members. But anyway, its effects are... Once per opponent's turn, if this card is in the extra monster zone, quick effect, so during either player's turn, essentially, but it's only during the opponent's turn. I don't know why they had to put quick effect on this if they already said once per opponent's turn. I guess just to indicate that it's a that it's a uh, that it's a spell speed two effect. But regardless, you can tribute one monster from your hand or field. Return one face up card on the field to the hand. So any face up card anywhere can be bounced from field to hand once during your opponent's turn by tributing a monster from your hand or field. Including this card, it doesn't say tribute another monster. And that's going to be rather uh, rather important when you start looking at its other effect. But, its second effect is, if this card is tributed, special summon one dragon monster from your hand or deck, but its attack and defense become zero. You can only use this effect of Hieratic Seal of the Celestial Spheres once per turn. So its bounce effect is not a hard once per turn, but it can only be activated on the opponent's turn while it itself is in the extra monster zone. So it is practically a hard once per turn effect because there's no way you'd have multiples of them in extra monster zones because you can only have one in an extra monster zone unless you are extra linking. So things to consider. But its second effect is actually just really, really good as far as just dragon support in general because this allows you to have another card that functions like a Heretic Dragon King of a Tomb to summon any dragon from your deck, making its attack and defense zero, which is ideally going to be Red Eye's Darkness Metal Dragon in most scenarios. Now, this card's very interesting in how it works specifically with Hieratics, considering it is a Hieratic named card, because while it does trigger itself, its own effect, its first effect, is very lacking in terms of what Hieratics themselves needed as a Link Monster, essentially. Now, the Hieratic theme, while it has cards like Hieratic Seal from the Ashes and the uh, Hieratic Seal of Reflection that actually, you know, function as cards that are meant to be played during a prolonged game, Hieratics themselves have had the most success competitively as, you know, just OTK enablers, an OTK deck, essentially. Like, just putting out a massive board and killing your opponent in one fail swoop, whether it's with, like, things like Gustav Max, in older formats when we had multiple darkness metals, whether it's just killing them through raw damage output, all that sort of stuff. Like just putting a tum with Gaia Saber, or not Gaia Saber, Gaia Dragon. It's been a long ass time since I've played that card physically. Just putting Gaia Dragon on top of a tum just to, you know, bypass the lack of attack that it has for summoning from deck, and then also doing piercing. Hieratics have always just been one of those decks that has had the most success when it's been implemented into an OTK strategy, and Konami knows this. It's very much easy information to, you know, gather, because it's very much how most of the archetype was structured. There's just a few outlandish cards, like Ashes and like Reflection, that don't really fit the theme of just kill your opponent. Now, this card kind of falls into that category as well, because it's on field effect, only works during your opponent's turn, 
which is not something that Hieratics are really, you know, trying to do. You're not trying to play on your opponent's turn. You're trying to end the game on your own turn, on your one turn. You're trying to just kill your opponent no matter what the uh, what the situation may be, at least in the context of a pure Hieratic deck. Now, this card's effect would have been a much, much better effect had they made its effect be able to be done during either player's turn, and then maybe if they had changed it to where it couldn't tribute itself, that would have been a lot more interactive in terms of how it would support Hieratics, as well as how it would support you know other dragon decks, because you'd be able to use it during your own turn to do something like Bounce Darkness Metal that you summon off a Tum to your hand, and then trigger a different Hieratic from your hand to summon a Vanilla. Like, it would have been very, very good, and not very broken, essentially, I don't think. It would have been perfectly fine had they made this card not able to tribute itself for its first effect, but if they had made it during either player's turn, to be able to, you know, bounce your own cards as engine pieces, or to be able to bounce your opponent's cards that are, you know, in the way, even though this can only bounce, what, face-up cards? Yeah, you can only bounce face-up, so it's not even, like, a way to deal with back row, although the deck does have Sue built in to deal with that. So, there are multiple things that could have been done as far as, uh, as far as things that they could have done to make this card better, in terms of the context of how it interacts with Hieratics. In terms of the pure Hieratic deck, this card doesn't do a lot outside of just being something that you summon, and then you just immediately tribute it for your other Hieratics, and you summon Darkness Metal out of your deck. So it's very good for that purpose, but it's also good in other decks for that very same purpose, particularly one that I'm very fond of, and that is Dragoonity. I think this card is a very, very strong contender in terms of extra deck capabilities and combo capabilities for Dragoonities as a deck, because specifically, this card is very easy to facilitate. Now, in the past, I've tried to make Dragoonity Hieratics work because, in theory, Dragoonities and Hieratics are a very strong fit together. One has Tefnuit and Sue and stuff that has, you know, economical ways to put monsters on the board and deal with back row threats through the forms of Sue, deal with monsters in the form of Nebthet and stuff, as well as having plays that could potentially bypass your normal summon because of Tefnuit and stuff like that. And at the core end of the day, both sides of the deck are trying to summon level 6 dragons, which make a tomb, which also just gets you into your main meat of your combos and stuff like that. Both engines have a common ending point. But that's really all they had. Dragoonity Hieratic in the past has been riddled with nothing but consistency problems, because outside of, you know, a set, there was no normal summonable Hieratic that was decent enough to put in the deck to allow you to have going first plays with your, you know, Hieratic engine and try to play that alongside the Dragoonity engine. It was very conflicted. You were conflicted between normal summon ducks and have combo pieces that only work with ducks, being like Mistleton or whatever, and then having your Hieratic engine, having your assets, your Sues, and your stuff like that. And the only real combo piece that intertwined with both of those decks were things like Garuda and Instant Fusion, things that put a level 4 Wing Beast on the field that didn't use your normal summon. So Garuda and Instant Fusion was really the only tie-in that the Dragoonity engine and the Hieratic engine had historically in the past to allow you to just make the engines meld together and then ultimately get into the same ending combos by setting up things with Gator and nonsense like that. This card changes this. This card makes it to where you no longer have to run a set to have a normal summonable Hieratic turn one because you can summon this with ducks. Ducks into Phalanx, into Vajrayana getting Phalanx back again, makes this card, because Vajrayana is a dragon and Phalanx is a dragon, so instead of making a level 8 synchro, you just make this card. And then you can immediately tribute this card for Sue, special darkness metal out of your deck, and then you're just off to the races. This is a very clear connection point that makes a good amount of synergy between both engines now, that makes Dragoonity Hieratic a much more viable option than it has ever been in the past. As well as the fact that this card by itself also allows a lot of good interactions combo potential wise with Ravine Zephyros again. Because previously, under Master Rule 4, we could not perform the regular Ravine Zephyros combo anymore of going Ravine, discard Zephyros, add Phalanx, bounce Ravine with Zephyros, discard Phalanx, add Ducks, and then make two Vajrayanas and make a Tum that way and make Darkness Metal come out of the deck that way, there was nothing we could do about that now under Master Rule 4. Like, Zephyros lost a lot of value, but now with this card, it gets that value back immediately. I say this because what you're able to do is go Ravine Zephyros and do the exact same line of play, but you make your first Vajrayana, and you make this card, 
and then you have the Zephyros or the Ducks just left on the field, and if you have Sue or Nephthet or a Hieratic to tribute uh, to tribute this uh, Celestial Spheres on the field to summon Darkness Metal from your deck, you now have a level 4 Winged Beast left on the field because of the leftover Zephyros or Ducks that you were allowed, which allows you to combo even further up. I'm really excited to test Dragoonie Hieratic possibilities with this card, and that's why this is my favorite card out of the Link Vrains pack, Legacy Support, because while it could have easily been better, could have easily been better for all of the dragon themes uh, that it's going to be, you know, possibly exploited in in the future. It's a generic dragon link two that has two arrows that point down, which is already fantastic for a deck like Dragoonies. It was something that we needed uh, to try and make extensive combos going forward instead of relying on gimmicky things like firewall infinite spamming. Uh, but otherwise, like this is just very good. Like this is very good to allow the deck to evolve and present itself in a new way that it's never been able to present itself before. And that is by, you know, not having to rely on normal summoning a set to have your Hieratic Engine even be something that you can play going first. And that's huge. That's something that's great. We've always been able to go second with the Hieratic Engine in a Dragoonie Hieratic Hybrid very efficiently because we had cards like Tefnuit. So you go Tefnuit, Sue, and try to bait back row and shit, and then you could follow up with your ducks, and you're like, got you. But... When you're going first, you only had a set, and all the other combo pieces between the Dragoonie engine and the Hieratic engine never meshed up until now. Now Dux is the set, essentially. Dux can normal summon this card, essentially, because normal summoning Dux with Phalanx and Grave gets you to Hieratic Seal of Celestial Spheres. And then, like I said, it gives you know Zephyros infinitely more potential than it had previously under Master Rule 4's new rule set, because now it allows us to just yield extra cards in that sort of way and fashion. So I'm really excited to start doing some combo testing with this in a more reasonable fashion, because while the infinite firewall loop that I made was really cool, and I really liked the, the theory behind it, it's not practical. It's not something that's going to be doable in a large tournament setting. But this card, this card is something that we could actually utilize alongside the addition of Destrudo in the deck, to just allow the Dragoony deck to actually evolve into something that's potentially reasonable to play and hopefully doesn't lose to every spell speed 2 card in the game. Only a couple of them, but not all of them, essentially. But anyway, those are my thoughts. I think this card is really cool. I really like this card. Contextually, it just doesn't really fit too well in Hieratics, strangely enough, but in terms of what it can allow for other dragon themes, it does allow Hieratics a good, you know, OTK boost in terms of their enabling... Uh, ena their, uh, their enableability to OTK, it does give them a huge boost there, but in terms of its first effect, it just doesn't mesh well with the rest of the theme, and it falls into the category of those other quirky Hieratic cards that are trying to play a prolonged game with your opponent when that's not what the deck's core design works best as. So, that's, uh, that's kind of unfortunate. I kind of wish this card could have been better for pure Hieratics, but this is a very good card to use in just any Dragon deck now as well as in the future whether it is hieratic based or not. So definitely something to consider moving forward is that this card could easily be abused in any future dragon decks because like I said before, it's the most supported uh, subtype of this game. Dragons and spellcasters are the two most supported types of this game. And dragons already have just infinitely more support than spellcasters do. And it's just something that's been a problem in the past. So much of a problem that Konami had to invent the worm type so they could print dragon-esque cards as not dragon type so they wouldn't be abused with all these other cards so it's very interesting when you look at it from those perspectives but anyway let me know what you guys' thoughts are on this card and the things that i've said about you know the dragoonie hieratic hybrids and things like that in the comments down below i'd love to hear your opinions on that but other than that as always guys thanks for watching like comment subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do links as always are in the description down below to my facebook fan page as well as my personal patreon page if you like the videos i've been doing and want to help support my ability to continue making them then Patreon is the best way to do so, as well as if you're interested in getting into my private Discord server, where me and a bunch of other people chat about Yu-Gi-Oh! and various other fandoms and shit on a daily basis, or if you're interested in monthly Yu-Gi-Oh! product giveaways, then definitely go check out the Patreon reward tiers on that link in the description. And any support you'd like to give the channel, you'd have my thanks in advance for, because it helps out a ton, like I've said many times in the past. But as I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, let me know your thoughts again in the comments down below on this card and anything I may have missed, but other than that, Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next video. But anyway, now the video's over, I'd like to give special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, and Eric Gertson, as well as everybody else that's currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a lot more than you may know. You have my eternal gratitude, and you guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support.